Took, Chapter 7. The next day, I left the house with my binoculars and my bird book, but instead of going to the woods, I hid in the hall. I hid in the tall weeds near the house and waited. It was a colder day and windy, but in a few minutes, Erica ran out the back door, darted across the yard, and disappeared into the woods. She took the same path, turned off into the clearing, and sat at the fallen tree. Her bright blue scarf blew in the wind, and her red hair swirled. Hiding behind a tall maple, I watched her closely. Once in a while she whispered to the doll, but for the most part she neither moved nor spoke. She sat still and stared into the woods. Waiting, I thought. But for what? Definitely a girl with secrets, no maybes about it. The wind yanked the last of the leaves from the trees and sent them flying through the air. They rustled and sighed and sank to the ground in brown and yellow heaps. Some settled in Erica's hair and on her shoulders. Others landed on little Erica. Nothing distracted my sister. Not the falling leaves, not the squirrel chattering on a branch over her head, not the crow cawing from the top of a dead tree. She sat so still I thought she must be holding her breath. Suddenly, she stood up and took a step or two toward the dead tree. She held the doll tightly and whispered to her. While I watched Erica, I glimpsed a shadow drifting toward her through the trees dark and formless, like a wisp of fog or smoke. I couldn't tell what it was. An old woman, a little girl, an animal, something small and dangerous. I could sense it. Behind it was something else, something worse. A shadowy, bony thing, taller than a man. Erica, I shouted. Stop. Don't go near it. Run. My sister turned to me. Daniel, what are you doing here? The shadow, or whatever it was, vanished, but I grabbed Erica and started pulling her away. What's wrong with you? Can't you see? There was something there. Let me go, she screamed. Let me go. No, you're coming home right now. My doll, she cried. My doll. Little Erica lay on the ground where my sister had dropped her, her face in the leaves. I have to get her. Erica twisted and turned, kicking me, flailing her arms. She wants her. She'll take her. Who wants her? I yelled. Who will take her? Erica didn't answer, but she struggled even harder to get away from me, crying and screaming. Holding her was like holding a cat that doesn't want to be held. She didn't have claws or sharp teeth, but she managed to bite me twice and scratch my face. But I didn't let her go, and I didn't pick up the doll. Out of the woods, at last, I saw Mom and Dad getting out of the van. When they saw me hauling Erica through the weeds, they hurried toward us. "'What's going on?' Dad shouted. "'Are you all right?' With a burst of strength, Erica broke away and ran to Mom and began sobbing, account of what happened. I was playing in the woods, she cried, and all of a sudden Daniel grabbed me and started dragging me home. He said I wasn't allowed to be in the woods. He made me leave little Erica there. She's lying on the ground all by herself. Dad and Mom looked at each other. You take care of Daniel, Mom said to him. I'll get Erica into the house. She's hysterical. No, Erica began struggling again. I have to get little Erica. I can't leave her there. It's almost dark, Dad said. We'll get the doll tomorrow. No, no, I'll never see her again. Erica thrashed about wildly, more certain, more like a cat than before. Take her to the house, Ted, Mom cried. I can't hold her. Dad got a firm grip on Erica, picked her up, and carried her toward the house. Her shrieks finally stopped when the back door closed behind Dad. Mom turned to me. What's this about? Why wouldn't you let her go get the doll? There was something in the woods, something dark and scary. Words tumbled out of my mouth. I didn't think about what I was saying. I didn't try to stop myself. I had to get her away from it. Mom looked at me as if I'd lost my mind. What are you talking about? I don't know. I saw it. I was scared. I thought it was going to grab Erica. She was just standing there like she was paralyzed or something. Mom put her hands on my shoulders and gave me a little shake. Daniel, how often do I need to tell you? No one is going to take you or Erica. No one is going to disappear. I took a deep breath and tried to calm down. I wanted to believe Mom. I hadn't seen anything in the woods. Neither had Erica. It was all my imagination. Celine Estes had disappeared, but she hadn't been taken by bloody bones. He was a legend. He wasn't real. I couldn't have seen him. But no matter what I told myself, I knew I'd seen something. I couldn't explain it. I didn't ha know what it was, but it had been there. After Erica cried herself to sleep, I talked Dad into going into the woods with flashlights to look for the doll. I didn't want to have to leave the house, but I felt bad about leaving little Erica in the woods. That doll was just a hunk of plastic to me, but to Erica, she was almost a real person. When we opened the back door, a gust of wind blew leaves into the kitchen. They skidded across the floor and settled in the corners as if they'd been waiting to come inside. 
It took all of Dad's strength to pull the door shut behind us. The night was biting cold, and almost full moon lit the field. At the edge of the woods, we turned on our flashlights. The wind tossed the trees, and their shadows danced over the path, crossing and crisscrossing the ground, making it hard to see. I stayed close to Dad, and he aimed the flashlight at the ground. Nothing looked familiar. It was as if we'd taken a different path, one you could only find at night. I heard noises in the undergrowth. I imagined creatures you'd never seen in the daylight scurrying through the dead leaves. I kept my eyes on the path so I wouldn't see anything in the shadows on either side of me. After we'd walked for half an hour or so, Dad stopped. His flashlight probed the dark, picking out one tree, then another. An owl was caught in the beam for a moment, its eyes huge and shining. Without giving me time to identify him, he slew, flew soundlessly into the woods. "'Are you sure we're going the right way?' Dad asked. "'I think maybe we passed the clearing,' I admitted. "'I don't remember it being this far. "'I told you we should wait till morning to look for that doll.' "'I shone the flashlight behind us. "'It all looks the same in the dark.' "'So I noticed,' Dad said. "'We turned around and walked back the way we'd come. "'Dad studied every tree, every boulder, every fallen log. "'He asked the same questions over and over. "'Is this it? Does this tree look familiar? "'Do you think we're close?' My answer was always the same. I don't know. After a while, Dad came up with new questions. Did you scare Erica on purpose? Why didn't you stop and let her get the doll? Were you teasing her? Bullying her? No, I said. No, I saw something, Dad. I thought... He shook his head. You saw something? All this because you saw something. What's wrong with you? I've been all over these woods and never seen anything out of the ordinary. Bumbling and stumbling ahead of me, Dad thrashed at dry weeds and dead vines with a stick. Everything was my fault. My fault Erica was hysterical. My fault the doll was missing. My fault we couldn't find the clearing. My fault we were wandering around in the woods, freezing our butts off. I give up, Dad said. The doll's gone and your sister's heartbroken. You should feel really great about that. Dad had never talked to me this way. He got mad so easily now. So did Mom. Erica was unhappy and secretive and strange. It was miserable in school and lonely. Nothing was right. Without speaking to each other, Dad and I left the woods and trudged across the field. In the cold and windy dark, the house looked warm and inviting. Lights shone from the windows, smoke rose from the chimney, but it was like a mirage. Up close, inside the house, the warmth and happiness vanished. No one spoke at breakfast. Mom slammed bowls of cold cereal down in front of Erica and me. She and Dad had already eaten and were getting ready to leave for work. Before she left, Mom hugged Erica. Please don't look so sad, sweetie. You and Daniel can look for little Erica when you get home from school. In the daylight, you're sure to find her. Erica didn't say anything. She sat with her head down, her cereal untouched, tears trickling down her cheeks. Erica, I promise I'll find her, I said. I don't know what got into me. I thought... That's enough, Daniel, Mom said. Forget about what you thought you saw in the woods. You're just making matters worse. But mom, outside, dad blew the horn, already annoyed. I have to leave. Mom grabbed her purse and fumbled with the zipper on her parka. The horn blew again. All right, all right, mom muttered to, to me. She said, find the doll. Erica's very upset. She cried all night. The door slammed shut and the van drove away. Its tires sprang gravel. I took Erica's untouched cereal bowl. I took Erica's untouched cereal bowl and put our bowls and glasses in the sink. We have to leave in ten minutes, I reminded her. She nodded, but she didn't move from the table. Aren't you going to brush your teeth? No response. I did what I had to do in the bathroom and returned to find Erica sitting exactly where I'd left her. I took her parka and mine off the hook. Here, put this on. Erica got up slowly and allowed me to help her with her jacket. You should at least comb your hair, I told her. You look terrible. 
Who cares what I look like? Erica pulled on her mittens and a knit cap mom had made her. Everyone at school hates me. Where are your school books? I don't know. I looked around and saw her book bag on the floor by the front door. From its weight, I knew her books were inside. Did you do your homework? No. Erica slipped the straps over her shoulder and followed me outside. The wind was cold and damp and smelled of winter. Silently, we walked down the driveway. Now that the trees were bare, we could see farther into the woods, all the way to the road. Erica, I said, did you see anything in the woods? A sort of dark shape, a shadow maybe? No. But you were sitting on that log, staring into the woods as if you were talking to somebody, and then you got up and walked straight toward whatever it was. She shook her head. That's what you thought I was doing. Well, what were you doing? Nothing. I wanted to shake the truth out of her, but I took a deep breath, counted to ten, and finally said, You told me you had a secret. Is it something you do in the woods? Someone you see or talk to? Do you still hear whispers in the dark? Era looked, Erica looked at me at last. Her pale face closed tight. A secret is something you don't tell anyone, Daniel. That's what it means. Does Mom know? I just told you. It's only a secret if you don't tell anyone. With that, Erica ran down the driveway ahead of me. I picked up a stone and threw it into the water, as, into the woods as far as I could. Thunk. It hit a tree and bounced off. I was frustrated. No matter what I asked, Erica would not give me an answer. Somehow, my seven-year-old sister was going to get the best of me. I caught up with her at the end of the driveway, shivering in the wind. We waited silently for the bus. I'd given up talking to her. What was the point?